you welcome to dr vibes today we shall study the vibe questions that comes from anemia anemia is a clinical pathological condition characterized by the quantitative and or qualitative diminution of the number of rbcs and or the amount of hemoglobin in relation to race gender and sex pallor is the discoloration or the paleness of the skin and the mucous membrane we have to look for anemia and pallor you will see from top to bottom the lower palpebral conjunctiva the soft palate the nail beds the palms and the soles and the generalized body surface anemia as i told you it is a clinical pathological condition and pallor is a sign which you get to see in anemia and some other conditions causes so you can divide the causes of anemia and pallor in three uh, things one is a deficiency of the intake of iron that is iron deficiency anemia or some nutritional causes like folate deficiency or <laughs> uh, b12 deficiency then there can be decreased absorption which occurs in hookworm conditions then there can be increased excretion which can happen in case of bleeding or any malignancy some other causes can be hereditary like sickle cell anemia hereditary spherocytosis classify anemia based on the size the parameter that we used is mcv mean corpuscular volume if it is less than 80 it is microcytic if it is 80 to 100 femtoliter it is normocytic and more than 100 it is macrocytic anemia classify anemia on the basis of color we use the parameter mch mean corpuscular hemoglobin if it is less than 27 picogram it is micro or hypochromic if it is 27 to 32 it is normochromic and there is nothing called as hyperchromic seven what tests will you do for pallor we usually do four tests one is the cbc with reti count second we do peripheral blood smear third we do iron profile and fourth we can also do red cell distribution with reti count what is normal 0.5 to 2.5 percent and it is increased in hemolytic anemia and it is decreased in case of certain drugs symptom wise differentiation of intra and extravascular hemolysis okay so intravascular hemolysis that means rbcs are getting destroyed inside the <laughs> blood vessel so intravascular hemolysis presents with hemoglobin hemoglobinemia hemoglobinuria hematuria haptoglobulin will bind with hemoglobin hence the concentration of haptoglobulin will decrease presentation of pallor but in extravascular hemolysis that means the rbcs are getting destroyed elsewhere not in the blood vessel where elsewhere in the liver in the spleen so you get to see hepatomegaly you get to see splenomegaly and haptoglobulin concentration will be normal here examples of intravascular and extravascular intravascular is easy it is paroxysmal cold hemoglobinemia paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinemia and cold antibodies formed in case of autoimmune hemolytic anemia in case of extravascular hemolysis you have the defect in the membrane rbc membrane so hereditary spherocytosis hereditary elliptocytosis you have the defect in rbc enzyme pyro pyruvate kinase deficiency you have warm antibodies in autoimmune hemolytic anemia pallor present but anemia absent question number 11 three conditions one when there is decreased blood supply to that area like hypopituitarism or shock and also you get to see anxiety question number 12 microcytic hypochromic anemia dd is there four dds thalassemia minor iron deficiency anemia anemia of chronic diseases and hereditary spherocytosis how to differentiate between ide and thalassemia metzner index if it is more than 30 it is iron deficiency anemia if it is less than 30 it is thalassemia causes of macrocytic anemia it can be folate deficiency or b12 deficiency question number 15 how to differentiate between all the dds of microcytic hypochromic anemia we use the iron profile the chart i will give you towards the end of the video 16 the drugs that cause folate and b12 deficiency folate deficiency is by phenytoin and ocps and b12 deficiency is by metformin rdw importance normally rdw is 12 to 16 It helps to identify an isopoikilocytosis.